Greetings everyone. For my presentation this week, I want to talk about the fundamentalist modernist controversy, and more specifically, the Presbyterian Church and a man by the name of J. Gresham Macon. Now in the 1920s and 1930s, within the United States Presbyterian Church, there was a lot of inner turmoil and conflict, which was in large part due to this broader fundamentalist modernist controversy. And in the early 1900s, there had began to be this rise of liberalism or modernism that would question a lot of the foundational beliefs of the Christian faith and the beliefs of the Presbyterian Church. So the Presbyterian Church had these, these core beliefs, these foundations of the faith, if you will, which included things like biblical inerrancy, that the Bible was true and accurate and could be trusted, uh, the deity of Christ, that he was indeed the, the Son of God on the earth, that he did many miracles while he was here, that his, his death on the cross was atonement for sins, his blood truly atoned for the sins of humanity, that he physically rose again on the third day, and then, of course, that he had uh, would one day return and come once again for all of his people. And so these were the, the core beliefs, the foundations of the faith, if you will. And liberalism and modernism uh, began to question these things and question the, the authority of Scripture and question if Jesus was truly the Son of God and, and if his death on the cross truly atoned for sins. And so it would question the authority of Scripture in this way. And so fundamentalism would essentially be uh, the movement that would rise up to combat the opposition, if you will, to liberalism and modernism. And fundamentalism st stayed strong with those core beliefs, those, those core values. Now, J. Gresham Macon was a minister, a teacher at Princeton Theological Seminary, which had a Presbyterian founding. Uh, but in the 1920s, as things like the, the Auburn Affirmations were released and, and the desire was th present to restructure the, the Princeton Seminary to become more modern, if you will, Macon decided it was time for him to, to lead. He could not support that, that idea. He was, he was fixated on the fundamentals. And so while Princeton was being restructured and becoming more liberal and more modern, Macon would go on to found the Westminster Theological Seminary in 1929. And in a, in a great article by the New York Times, uh, you see this headline that says, Macon wants to start a new seminary to quote-unquote continue the old Princeton tradition. And meanwhile, in the same headline, you have Princeton professors saying, while we're restructuring the, the seminary, our, our, core, our beliefs or our theology has not changed. To which Macon would say, without the core beliefs of the faith, the fundamentals, you've completely abandoned the faith altogether. And that's, that's an assertion we would see in his book called Christianity and Liberalism, where he would argue that without these foundational elements of the faith, your theology has completely changed. And as a matter of fact, you created a whole new religion. So liberalism or modernism was his very own religion. It was not even the same thing anymore. And so not only would he write on this issue and establish the seminary, but he would also go on to officially establish the Orthodox Presbyterian Church in 1936, which was kind of the official split of the Presbyterian Church. And so he was very fixated on these foundations of the faith and that liberalism and modernism were a completely separate religion, that they were not one and the same. And so he truly believed that you had to hold to the foundations of the faith as opposed to becoming more like culture or more like society. Now, a great additional source that helped me tremendously in this study uh, that, that elaborates more on this is the Presbyterian Controversy, Fundamentalist, Modernist, and Moderates by Bradley J. Longfield, in which he talks about uh, Presbyterian Church. He talks about modernism and liberalism. He talks about some of the heresy trials that took place in the Presbyterian Church, some of the, the key figures like William Jennings Bryan, um, as well as religion and culture as a whole. And so that's just an additional resource, resource for you. But thank you so much for joining me in this topic, and I look forward to our continued study in this course.